Sometimes it bounces, it hits the brain and it bounces that way. Where it's, our brain, it's our brain's fault. Are oh. we already started? Yeah, we're rolling. No. Hey guys, welcome back to the Not So Round Table. This is the, what is this, the week before, week before the holidays? Uh, two weeks. It's the 12th. Right. right. Well, I mean, but this it's will be. It's airing on the. Week before. 18th. Right. You better have shipped out your packages by now. <laughs> no, I mean, even if you wait till the 20th or the 21st or the 22nd, yeah, you still get it. Yeah, next day area. That's a really cool patch you have there. My E-Team patch? The E-Team patch. Shh, no secret. Oh. They're not coming out yet? They're not coming publicly now. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, well, uh, so you guys know how we do here on the Not So Round Table. It's just George and myself uh, this time. Uh, took a break from the norm last time to try out some Reddit questions. We weren't able to do that this time. Uh, but we put in all the uh, the questions that we've missed for a couple episodes. Those have all gone back in the helm, uh, gotten we mixed up. We've added a bunch of really cool questions, I think. Really quick, we'll bring up some like housekeeping. Uh, no, I don't know, guys. I, I when we look through the questions, we can't answer. We're not going to pick the questions that are: Is this gun a good gun? Is blank gun a good gun? It just it's. We're, we have too many of those, like, we can't answer them, like, I mean, and we're always going to say, you know, it's a good gun. Well, that's all, <laughs> that's all, like, really opinion-based. Yeah, and uh, we yeah. want to avoid it's, that kind of It'd be the same stuff. question as if, 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 if someone said, like, oh, I have, you know, X amount of dollars, you know, what should I buy? I mean, that's in almost entirely opinion-oriented. So it, it'd be you really buy difficult so for many us to suggest things, something you know? for you. Yeah. Um, so. But anyway, let's, let's get on into the questions. Do you want to start? Mm -hmm, sure. All right. <clears throat> Nathan Boss asks, hey, Matt, George, and a possible guest. Possible. What are your opinions on high-speed scout roles? Uh, are they used, useful or pointless? Love the show. Keep doing what you Keep doing both the themed and non-themed episodes. Cool. So, scouts. <clears throat> recon. High-speed scouts, yeah. Yeah. What makes them high-speed? They could run really fast. Yeah, I was going to say, like, they I think he means just, like, being in front, maybe moving quickly. Useful, for sure. Almost in any type of airsoft, whether it's... You're light and fast, and you're playing CQB. You're going to get to the 50 faster, if you know that's that term of get to the 50, and you will do very, very well uh, if you're fast. So I, I completely agree that it's a very good role. As a scout, I mean, that's a good role as well. In terms of it's like a sniper overwatch role, they can be really ben beneficial because it can help um, provide cover fire to allow your guys to move up. Um, it can also be able... They can also be used as a role to... Uh, eliminate outliers. So if anybody's trying to flank you, that's a good way of controlling yeah. flanking. Yeah, um, but more often than not, I think you'll find that the true effectiveness behind a recon team or a, a quick sniper is your ability to communicate with your squad. It does you no good if you're sitting out on some hill popping people off and you aren't able to communicate to your guys that they can move up or that someone's flanking them or yeah. such, so on and so forth. So good communications are key, especially when you're doing that role. Make sure that you're on comms with you know a squad or even your platoon leader, you know, that way you can really, really help. That's a good question. That's a very good question. Yeah. Good answer. Yeah, right. Yes. All right. Answers. It's airsoft related. <clears throat> okay, this one is from Pablo Benito. Airsofting while riding horses. Yay or nay? Nay. <laughs> <laughs> or, yay or nay? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, revolver. It would have to be with revolvers. Cowboy hats. Uh. For the horses. I think you could probably... Oh, yeah, no, no. We'd have to have some sort of eye pro for the That's horses. the thing. I would be concerned about the safety for yeah. the horse. Not to mention, you know, controlling a horse <laughs> while you're trying to shoot at somebody. I think it would only work maybe with AEGs or, like, quiet guns. Because you wouldn't want to startle <laughs> yeah, yeah, a horse with, like, a GBBR. Well, I mean, startling, though. I mean, there are, there are war horses, you know, and... Where are you going to get a, a war horse for Airsoft? Well... I would say it would not be a good idea to try it, but I'm always down to try something. Can you even ride a horse, Matt? I, I can. Yeah, really? I'm surprised. Mm -hmm. I grew up in L.A., but I, I know how to ride a horse. Oh, okay. Yeah. Was it just going to, like, the uh, the, the stables, uh, or stables, not stables, uh, <laughs> stables by uh, Griffith Park? or? No, no, no. I've, I've actually no. done, like, horsebacking okay. when we go, like, on, like, camping and backpacking oh. trips. Wow. Huh, cool. <laughs> Uh, there you I, go. I have a family of ranchers in Wyoming, so. I've never been to Wyoming. Eh, it's pretty flat. I believe it. It's in the Midwest. Isn't it? It is. No. I have no idea where Wyoming is. You, you, know, where, you know where Colorado is? Yes. 
It's the state that's north of Colorado. Is Colorado the Midwest? Yes. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Roger. We need to work on your geography skills. Yep. It's <clears throat> next to New York. Uh, Cody Ross asked, Dear Insert, what is the most expensive thing you have ever broken or lost while playing Airsoft? <laughs> also, doesn't it, doesn't it sound too... Uh, oh, doesn't it sound too operator for beaver and wood to be operating at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> so, what, is the, oh, what would be the odds you would both be at a dam, a D-A-M? Ha <laughs> ha! Twice. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, we're too operator. <laughs> we're very... <laughs> What's the most expensive thing you lost in the field? We've talked about this before, about my pistol. Which yes, technically technically wasn't lost, but for a while there, for more than a year, yeah. I had, for all intents and purposes, lost it. And that was a $1,500 gas blowback pistol that I had built. So that would else? be the most expensive. No, thankfully, I have not lost anything else see, at an airsoft game. See, I keep using your story thinking I'm going to somehow find my contour camera that I lost. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. I'm somehow going to find it, but I know out I'm in, not. Out in the bush wilderness. <laughs> in the bush, it'll just spring up out of nowhere. <laughs> Uh, so your contour camera was your most most expensive. Yeah, that was a pretty bad thing to lose. That's yeah, no. That but bad. at least you had the rail attachment still, and that's the hard part to find. Uh, they're remaking them now. Now are they really? So yeah, they're not hard to find anymore. No. I told Jet he has to get his own now. Oh, can't keep borrowing ours. Well, well. Anyway, that's what I lost. I lost a contour camera that was a rage cam, my zoom cam. So it's like that a rage cam. Dope. Yeah, I know. It's like a two fifty. Yeah. Eh, oh well, it happens. It happens. We've okay. all lost Thunderbees. <clears throat> yeah. Because, like, you throw them at people, and then they call out, and then they just take it with them. Or magazines. Uh, camshaft 117ZZZ, sleeping. Uh, hello, Insert. My question for you all is, when traveling to Milsom events, what do you guys do to primarily pass the time on flights besides sleep? Any funny stories or memories that would be awesome would be awesome to hear. <laughs> Love the idea for a theme each week. Definitely keeps things fresh and interesting. <laughs> I think I think when we come back from the holidays, we should do a themed episode of what would be the theme. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to come yeah. up with it right, yeah, well, by so the let's end let's of this video. Okay, we'll, we'll come up. With it. We'll answer. think about it. <laughs> uh, a few things come to mind with this. Um, when Roger fell asleep at, uh, <laughs> at LAX. Of course he can't be he's here got, to like, talk this, about it. He's, no, he's got like this epic beard. So he was asleep and I'm like, I wonder how asleep he is. So I kind of started putting Skittles on this his This guy gets a bag of Skittles and like Roger's kind of, you know, asleep like this with enough like <laughs> lip on his beard to support said Skittles and then just proceeds to just fill <laughs> his beard with Skittles. And he wouldn't have woken up except they were like, hey. Hey, hey, are you awake? And then he wakes up with the angriest face known to man. I've never it seen it. It took him a while to wake up. Like, yeah. he had to, like, kick him. Yeah. And then he woke, wakes up just like, what's going And then sees the Skittles <laughs> falling out. And I think, did he eat one? Roger, did you eat one? Did yeah. you eat one of the Skittles? He did. Okay. Yeah. Any other funny? Yeah, um, done? Let me see. To pass the time. To pass the time? I don't know. Uh, well, usually, when Shades is with us, him and I and, and Roger will play, if we're sitting near each other, we'll play movies. Worms Just like any time you travel, you watch movies, read books. <laughs> uh, we don't really chit-chat that much anymore. No. no. We listened to some people complain on a flight once. Mm -hmm. um, Brandon's pretty annoying on a plane. <laughs> we, we all smile yeah. but uh, it made for an interesting picture you know with, with yeah. uh, cigars and Heinekens yeah. they were not lit cigars oh the last flight I kept <laughs> farting around with Jet's ear because he was sitting in front of me and then <laughs> him and Leah are like talking and I just keep poking his ear that's mean Matt. <clears throat> Matthew Spadzicki Inkski Spadzinski Spadzinski there we go um, hey, Evic, I was wondering, what does parlay mean? Uh, I've heard it many in many videos, but cannot figure out what it means. Thanks, P.S., don't worry about my last name. Nobody ever gets it right. <laughs> hey, thanks for the... You're funny. welcome! <laughs> um, do you want to... Yeah, sure, a parlay is really simple. Uh, this basically means kind of like a truce, almost. So, for example, uh, we're both playing Airsoft, and, and I up. have my back to George. This is cause for what's known as a, a bang bang or a surrender rule. Because, or I just shoot him. Or you can shoot me if you're far enough away. So this him. is uh, so this is because I'm I'm unable to see him. Now on the on the other side of things, if if I happen to be posting up and then you come around a corner and we can see each other, that's what's known as a barrel to barrel or a parlay situation in which both of us had the opportunity to shoot each other. However, 
it depends on the rules of the field. Like, if you have a non-engagement, obviously it would be whoever gets hit first or you get hit at the same time. Right. Um, In which case, a parlay is a way to separate yourselves. So yes, you, you both have a gentleman's agreement. You would basically have a gentleman's agreement that you would not shoot each other. You'd go back 10, 20 feet. And then re-engage if you're, you know. So it's pretty standard. It's some which some is offs. hilarious because usually after you after you've parlayed one player, you'll go around the corner and get shot anyway. Yeah, I prefer <laughs> just the honestly, like I just prefer to shoot first and apologize later. Wow, <laughs> you do too. No, I don't. I usually scream surrender <laughs> at people. Yeah. All right, uh, Mr. Bubbles asks, "What do you think about electric blowbacks?" That new Lonex one's pretty cool. That's the the bow dynamics. Yeah, the bow dynamics yeah. one is really cool. Like, uh, I mean, there's been a lot of the recoil based systems, um, whether it's like the ERG or whatever, which is also the, good. They've been good. They're good. They're just. I just really think that the Lonex one is really, a, honestly, like I just really like it. It's. I think the advantage but, to the EBBs is is you've got all of the recoil that you want without having to deal with gas. Yeah. Yeah, true, but I mean, it's it's it comes down to more breaking parts is what we go back to, true. and that's why I will never buy one. Even though I think it's really cool, I will never buy one just because it's working. This, I just don't want to deal with more stuff. Although that system's really impressive. Yeah, no, it is. I really like it. I was very impressed, especially by the price point. <clears throat> uh, Cyber Scorpio ninety four. Hey Matt and George, possible guest. When your gear is not being used and. <laughs> and what do you store in it? It in. The reason I asked is I recently got a new puppy who is going through the teething stage oh, and no. uh, would like to have any of your ideas. Uh, there's, I've, being in LA, I mean, uh, in apartments for nine years now, you kind of get used to having to consolidate stuff and put it in places. So I like going to like uh, any store that you can get bins from like target oh Walmart. Just, just a yeah just large bins, bin. and you just kind of put them in there um right now i store them in a closet because i actually have my own room now to store this kind of stuff so it all sits on like hooks on tough hooks in the closet i was gonna ask you the hooks that you have they're like a large plastic yeah that's called a tough hook we sell those um oh we do we sell those yeah we, we use them in a video that you you were filmed that oh, you filmed uh, actually i think I think you even did a video. I didn't on, do the video on the tough hook. You didn't do a video on no. the tough hook. Wow. Well, but the I, tough hook is really cool because it's large enough that it can support the weight of your like vest. It's like 200 pounds or something yeah. crazy. And that number. way you can actually hang your vest up, which I don't do. Yeah, honestly, probably my closet hanger would fall off before the tough hook breaks. Wow. Yeah, well, it's, you know. Usually my, my airsoft with... gear ends up on the floor of my room. All of it. Every single piece of uh, of equipment that I own just ends up strewn across yeah, my so floor. So I usually hang out my vest, and then, like, the <clears> small <throat> stuff will get... I have, like, bins that I put like stuff in. Like a footlocker kind of thing? Yeah, almost like that. Like, the... And I'll just throw, like, all miscellaneous pouches go in one if I remove a pouch or but whatever. But you have quite a few miscellaneous gloves, pouches. Gloves, things like gloves, shamogs, all that kind of stuff. Just gets thrown in one bin, and then... Um, grenades and stuff and magazines get thrown in another just make sure you let your vest air out before you put it in any permanent storage so that it doesn't get all funky yeah so you get that combat funk that milsim that Ew. milsim funk <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> next question yeah is that what we're doing okay all right um this one's from N O No Z Gaming HQ. Dear Insert, how much does it cost to go to a multiple day event like Op Red Storm? Things like ammo, cost of admission, etc. Depends where you live, so it depends on your travel cost. That's I'm not I'm not even gonna. Let's okay, so no, let's not okay, factor so the event. Travel usually, into you, it. usually those events run between like 125 to 175 to 200 sometimes, depending on if you're an alumni or what you know what have you. So you have that. And then you obviously BBs. And you generally want to bring a bag or two of ten thousand rounds. You need at least yeah, I'd say at least twenty thousand rounds to be safe. Uh, can of green gas if you're running a pistol, maybe two cans of green gas if if you're running a, you know, or a propane whatever. Right. Uh, your camping supplies if you're going to camp, tent, you know, all that stuff. So. And then if you have to buy a mission specific uniform, for yeah. example, if you had to, you know, it can add up. You know, you can you can easily end up spending a thousand dollars for an op off of uniforms and. Flights and hotels right. or whatever. Yeah. So you I know. think I think like aside from like the travel thing, you could probably go to an event that's a reasonable distance away 
for let's say two to five hundred dollars. Yeah, I'd say that two to five hundred for the whole weekend. You know, uh, that's a pretty good, pretty good number, especially if you do it on the cheap, like camping. Camping is awesome. Camping is awesome. We um, don't do it enough. Yeah, we're gonna camp next time. I'm, I'm, are we? I'm going to. At least. So are you gonna go to the uh, the Nelson West forty hour? Yeah. Yes. Jet and I were thinking about doing a sniper team, like him and I, like sniping. Like he, like he would spot and I would snipe. Mm-hmm. And we were thinking about just camping out on like a hill. That'd be cool. But then we thought, people already think we have like this bromance thing, and if we go to an op, we're just like I think camping that's, out on I our think own. that's even better. Like, what are you talking really, about? I think that'd be perfect. We'd get really weird. I don't care. I think that's a great idea. I think you guys should do, if there's any op to do something like that, <laughs> it's probably that one, because you're going to be standing around for a while, probably anyway. No, so. but that's, and then we need someone to provide rear cover, so we need I don't know. I'm just, a, I'm just an ammo delivery driver for that game. I'm just are driving, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. It's all right. We'll, we'll switch off. I'll use the 240 every once in a while. Um, Andrew Fennell asks, is it bad for mechanics, for the mechanics of the gun to dry fire an airsoft gun? No. Uh, well, all right. In an AEG. In an AEG, no. It's not a problem. No, yeah, it's just cycling. Yeah. All you're doing is just, I guess, wearing the piston out a little bit. Yeah. If that. In a gl- gas blowback rifle, however. You could damage um, the mag. Uh, the mag follower. The mag follower. Because um, it's coming up and the nozzle's impacting it. So that would be where you would not want to dry fire. If you wanted to have like a dry fire gun, you could remove the follower out of one of your magazines and mm-hmm. just fill that with gas and then dry fire just that. You wouldn't yep. run into any risk about mushing or damaging any, any of those parts. Right? Yep, there you go. There's the answer. We'll do one more question because we have a short one. Okay. You take the last one. All right, fine. And make this a good one. All right. This question is from Trevor Hildebrand. Answer. Have you guys ever played paintball Parentheses, don't hurt me. Question mark. <laughs> what was your experience like compared to playing airsoft? We may have to answer another question because I've never played paintball. Okay, you haven't played. I played paintball when I was just ending high school and then a little bit in college. It's, uh, more of the speedball type stuff. Okay. It was fun. It was exercise. It was uh, more camaraderie, you know, doing it with friends. In terms of what I prefer, I prefer airsoft. It's a lot cheaper. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So, sorry, I didn't have any insight into that. It's all right. We got we got one. That's a huge piece of paper for such a short question. <laughs> <laughs> and the final question for this episode of Not So Round Table it's is from Black Kitty, and it's the question: Can Jet grow facial hair? No. <laughs> That'd be ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> no, he can. You know those uh, those beard beanies we sell. Instant, Instant beard, right there. Wait, or maybe he has like an invisible beard. You know, next product coming out of the Desert Fox camp is Chia Beard. <laughs> well, guys, happy holidays. Have a fantastic uh, next week. Uh, hopefully, you guys get to see family and friends and everything. Spend time uh-huh. with your loved ones. Uh, we'll be doing just that. Some of us are going home. Some of us are. Uh, hanging out here near the evic.com store. Yeah, it's because you like, live down the street. Because <clears throat> I live down the street. <laughs> I'm going anyway. to Vegas. Are you really? Well, yeah, in-laws are in Vegas. Oh, that's right. Well, lucky <laughs> you. And when you're going back for SHOT Show. Yeah, I know. Anyway, we'll see, you guys, uh, twice. we'll see you guys in a couple weeks. Happy right. holidays. Happy holidays.